morning and welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Lent. We're almost halfway through the month of March. We hope to see spring just around the corner as we once again gather together. Two years, two years this weekend was our last in-person worship service on March 15th, 2020 at Windsor Park United Church. And we continue to come together in worship each and every week. For those of you that are joining us for the first time, we welcome you today. We thank you for being with us and we hope that you find this time among us, even though we're separated by distance, we still hope you find this time to be life-giving and energizing. For those of you who have been with us for the past two years, we thank you. And we welcome you back as we come together once again in community, coming together across the miles, and yet we still are community. And so let us come together this day and worship in prayer and song together as we worship God. During Lent, we remember the events that led up to the crucifixion. Jesus had come to bring hope and light to the world, but at every step, there were those who could not accept the power of the light. He came to meet people's needs, but there were those who misunderstood the kind of needs that Jesus meant to fill. Because he would not do what they wanted, they rejected him. Yet even in Jerusalem, where Jesus knew that he would face rejection, Jesus came riding in, bringing light and love. We light this candle to remember the light and love in the face of hatred and rejection. Please join me in the call to worship. If God is a hen, we are under God's wing. If God is a table, we each have a seat. If God is a house, we are safe from the storm. If God is a party, we're invited to dance. If God is a melody, our name are the lyrics. If this is God's house, then all are welcomed. All are loved, all belong. Let us worship our holy God.
join me in the prayer of approach and confession. Family and faith, we come to this time today, approaching God humbly, called into community to live, to love, to work together for the coming of God's kingdom. We come to this time to confess not so that we are wallowing in our own guilt. Instead, we come to confession because we know that change starts with being honest. So in a desire to grow and change, let us offer this prayer to God who has always loved us like a mother hen. So often we are like the Pharisees who tried so hard to stop Jesus. They didn't understand what he was trying to do, and so they worked against the coming of God's kingdom. Jesus could not be stopped. Jesus said, I will keep on. I will keep on healing. I will keep on teaching. I will keep on preaching. I will flip the tables on injustice. I will keep on treating every person like a child of God. I will keep on believing that this world can change. So when we become like those Pharisees, when we forget what Jesus tried to do, when we stop living into what Jesus tried to do, we ask for your forgiveness and we pray that we too might keep on until God's promised day comes. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Because Jesus' love keeps on going, we can trust that love and grace exist for us. So take comfort in this good news. No matter what we do wrong or what we leave undone, we are under God's wing. We are loved, held, forgiven. Thanks be to a God for a love like that. Amen. So this Lent we've been talking about and using a resource called Full to the Brim. And I've been thinking about this idea of being full to the brim and how for many of us we all have different ideas about what it means to be full. And so I'm going to use a little demonstration. I have water. Now this water has tea in it. It's not dirty water. It's tea water. And I'm going to pour it in it and we're going to talk about what does it mean to be full. Because there's a point that I want to make. And so let's start, we'll pour a little bit of water in here. That's not even halfway. Would people say that that was full? Probably not. Probably most people would say, no, we need to have more in there for it to be full. So we put in a little bit more. Oh, I think we're getting close. Some people might say that that's enough, that that's pretty full, because we don't want to overfill it. And so for some people, that might be full. But is it really full? Put a little more in there. I think for most people, they would say that that's pretty full. I'm just going to adjust it a little bit. That's even. They would say that that's pretty well full. But I think the reality is that we could probably get a little bit more in there. So now I would say that that's full. We're right to the top. When we talk about being full to the brim with God's love and God being full of love, is this what we're talking about? Is this as full as God's love is? Or are we talking more about this? A love that actually overflows the bounds of what we think is full. I think it's an important thing for us to think about, especially today 
and with our sermon and meditation today and what we're talking about. And so I want you to think about that. I want you to think about what does it mean for us to be full to the brim and what does it mean for God to be filled with love and how do we possibly limit what that means? How we don't realize that God's love is always more than what we think it is. So I want you to think about that as we go through the rest of the service. And we'll see you next time in our Time for All Ages. first reading this morning is from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, 
my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though any army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Our second reading this morning is from Luke 13, verses 31 to 35. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing curses today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you are not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes, and when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. So today we come to our second Sunday in Lent and we hear a psalm of thanksgiving to God which speaks to the ideas that God is light, and salvation, strength, courage and hope in the midst of the strife and struggle that oftentimes is a part of our lives. This is then paired with Luke's story of that threat to kill Jesus. It's a story that some of us will remember hearing many times before, and yet it's, it's violence and anger stands in sharp contrast to the psalm that talks about God's gracious love and mercy. It's interesting to think about why these two would be paired for this Sunday in Lent. What might we need to hear today in the midst of our own world and in the midst of our own lives? It's important for us, if we're going to connect these readings to our lives, to understand the context, the setting for the words, and especially in Luke's Gospel, that Gospel that is full of violence and anger. Reverend Wilma Gaffney speaks to the context of the Scripture from Luke in the following way. When some Pharisees come to warn Jesus that Herod is going to kill him, he has to take it seriously. Herod is from a family where murder is a casual pastime. His father, Herod the Great, had murdered three of his sons, one of his wives, and one of his mothers-in-law, along with former friends and servants. And according to Matthew's Gospel, he tried to kill Jesus before he was even out of the cradle, although Luke doesn't seem to have that knowledge or follow that same tradition. 
Some people believe that the Pharisees were setting Jesus up and trying to get him to stop preaching and, and leave town with a fictitious threat, while others believe that the threat was deadly earnest because Herod was his father's son and every bit as lethal. But this reading is not just about Herod. It's about Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the home of the temple, the city that, as we hear in other places of Scripture, is set up on a hill, the city that was to be a shining beacon to the world of God's reign on earth. But the reality is that Jerusalem struggled to be any of those things. Returning once again to Reverend Wilma Gaffney for context, she says, Jerusalem, the city of peace, Ir Shalom, never seems to have lived into its name except perhaps for a few glorious years during the reign of David and Solomon. The people of Jerusalem were Jerusalemites long before they were Israelites. In truth, some of them never ever became Israelites. They were Canaanites. 350 years, sorry, 3,500 years before the time of Jesus, more than 5,500 years before our time, the people of what we now call Jerusalem were striking fear in the heart of Egypt. Then they were con conquered by a Canaanite people, the biblical, that the Bible calls the Jebusites. And David conquered them. David brought some measure of peace to Jerusalem before he died, but it was not a good peace. It was a bloody peace. And he passed that fragile peace onto Solomon, under whom it withered and died from internal strife. Almost 600 years before Jesus, the Babylonians ravaged Jerusalem. The, Pal the Persians liberated it from the Babylonians, but did not free it. And they were followed by the Greeks and the Romans and alternating Christian and Muslim empires and the Ottoman Turks and the British. It just goes on and on and on for Jerusalem. Each wave of occupation was brutal. Jerusalem has long been acquainted with death, but that wasn't the death that Jesus spoke of in response to the warning from Herod. Jesus was speaking of the death of people like himself, the men and women who stood up and spoke truth to power of the day the men and women who stood up and called out the excess, the privilege of the few over the needs of the many, the marginalization and the continued oppression of so many whom society deemed as others. These were the deaths that Jesus was speaking of. Jerusalem was not kind to the prophets in her midst. And yet in the midst of all this, in the midst of really understanding what Jerusalem was about, Jesus speaks his desire to gather your children as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. In the midst of the death threats from Herod, in the midst of knowing how Jerusalem has treated the prophets in her midst, Jesus responds not by lashing out, not with condemnation, but with protective love. One might say that Jesus responds to all that faces him in Jerusalem with unconditional love love. We speak of this Lenten journey that we are on with Jesus, and yet in the face of such hatred, hatred that is common, historical in Jerusalem, the threat of death, Jesus continues to set his sights firmly on Jerusalem because he loves Jerusalem. 
This is not the Jesus who is willing to take the easy way out. This is the Jesus who will continue to challenge what the world and in reality what we think even today. Jesus, who in our reading today continues to challenge the norms as he even goes so far as to use the image of a female hen in his description of himself. Think about that for a moment. What does it mean for us to hear that, that description of Jesus in the feminine in our world today? Jesus, who was an unmarried Jewish man, which would have been a huge scandal in the ancient world, Jesus, who was a man without children, which would have been seen as pitiable, pitiable in the world. Jesus, who broke all cultural norms, who cast off that whole patriarchal, masculine expectations of the ancient world and society, is the one who approaches those who are a threat to him, offering love and nurture. This is the God that we need to see today. This is the God who transcends our human-made boundaries and offers unconditional love to each one of us today. The reading from Luke today reminds us that God is our refuge, that nothing can separate us from the love of God or ever keep God from gathering us like a hen gathers her brood. God's love is always there protecting us furiously. Jesus' lament over Jerusalem is not a condemnation because of how he was treated by Jerusalem, but rather it is a lament it is sadness that they are lost. And yet Jesus continues to love them and desires to gather them in together one day. How often have we been like Jerusalem in our own lives? How often have we been quick to ostracize, marginalize, cast aside those who don't fit the mold of what we think they should be, or cast aside those who are different. We have been living through a global pandemic, and now we face the specter of war in our midst. It might be easy for us to fall into the trap of Jerusalem to be those who are impatient and judgmental and callous and uncaring to the world around us. We all have been finding ourselves under so much pressure, and we have been through a lot. And yet even when we act like this, when we are more like those in Jerusalem, God continues to desire to gather us in, to protect us under God's wings as a hen protects her brood. We can be, and quite often are challenging, we can be difficult people in our lives. We might even at times push God away because we don't have the energy, we don't want to be bothered. And yet, like the dish, God's love is ever overflowing. It's fuller than what we could ever expect. And God remains with us, loving us, because the love of God never ends. God's love for us is so deep so wide and so rich that there are not enough images or words to describe it. It is completely beyond what we know. It is more than we know. And yet, it is always there for us. 
we are full to the brim with the love of God. Today, in the midst of this Lenten journey, in the midst of all that has happened in these last two years in this world, in the midst of facing down the possibility of war, today maybe we are called to rest in that love. No matter where we are on our journey of faith, no matter what we have done or have not done, maybe today we are called to know and to rest in the love of God. We are called to know that the unconditional love of God is there for us today and every day. We are loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to join me now as we become God's people in prayer. Please take a moment, deep breath, center yourselves, and let us enter into a time of responsive prayer. When you hear me say we pray, we passionately pray, I invite you all to respond with, God renew the face of the earth. That Lent, may bring a return to the covenant in which we love God and our neighbor as Jesus teaches. We passionately pray. 
God renew the face of the earth. That Lent may be a time for justice and truth and peace in the decisions of state, national, and world governments, we passionately pray, God, renew the face of the earth. That Lent may be a time for each household to strengthen bonds of love and communication, we passionately pray, God, renew the face of the earth. That Lent may be a time of hope and healing for each one of us, a time when we might feel the mothering love of God as a hen who gathers her young under her wing. We lift up to you today those who we hope will feel your nurturing presence in their lives, God, as we lift up in prayer. Marlene, Susan, Rob, Ken, Lindsay, Reese, Hayden, August, Janice, Kim, Brian, Diana, Olga, Liam, Heather, Barb, Joan, Dave, Richard, Ralph, Maisel, Ailey, and Sinead. We also lift up in prayer Bill and Carol Belsham and Gloria and Don Sainden on the passing of Bill's brother Charlie this past week. We pray for the world. We pray for Ukraine, for all of the people who are struggling through that invasion. We pray for the people of Russia who are ardently protesting against the actions of their government. We pray that peace and wisdom will be the, the, the words of the day that we can all live together in harmony. We pray for all of us as we enter into a new phase of moving forward during this pandemic this coming week. We pray for all of our first responders, healthcare workers, teachers as they continue to navigate this new way forward. We passionately pray, God, renew the face of the earth. Hear our prayers, O God, and we join them to our promise to live Jesus' way of love. Amen. As you leave this place and this time together, may you be awestruck by the beauty of this world. May you laugh and may it be contagious. May you overflow with love for those around you. May you be bubbling over with hope and quick to point out joy. And in all of your living, breathing and being, May you find yourself full to the brim with God's Holy Spirit, and may it change your life. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, go in peace, full to the brim. Amen.